I'm about to give a, a really fantastic lecture to, about the ocean's role in climate. I give talks in a lot of different locations, but doing it at home is a little more nerve-wracking. So I'm gonna try to do my best to do a really good job. We're gonna nail it. <laughs> Where am I supposed to be, Joaquin? Can I just follow you around? Good evening, kids. That wasn't bad. Right after the lecture, don't don't go and uh, go, go behind stage. Well, it's a full house. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's also streamed. Holy crap, Jimmy! I'll, I'll knock him dead for you. Okay. <laughs> the first time we did it was now 11 years ago. The first year was an enormous success. We never expected to have the. 500 people show up for the first lecture and uh, we immediately moved to Centennial Hall and the rest of it is history. We've just been trying to uh, keep creating good programs which obviously our community appreciates. We've had a couple of lecture series on mind and brain and things of that sort. Uh, cosmology, space sciences, this community just loves that. We had one on genomics and people loved that one too. We did global climate change 10 years ago. And uh, we thought that it would be a good time to do it again. And then the Paris talks made it even more timely. So this lecture series, as you well know, that the theme of it or the title of it is Earth Transformed. I have a committee that was sort of self-assembled since day one. It was, at, as I said, when we were talking about evolution and whatnot. And that committee has sort of stuck around. Every year we sit down and we talk about a grand challenge of science that uh, the community would like to know and, and which we think is important. We come up with a title and then I go on my Rolodex and I, f and, I, and I go and figure out who are the best faculty members that could address the issues of the lecture series. Hello, I'm Joaquin Ruiz, Dean of the University of Arizona's College of Science and this is Arizona Science. With me here today is Russell Monson. What's your view of uh, the fate of the Amazon as a function of what global climate change? Well, uh, biologically, the Amazon is, is struggling. The effects of, of some of the climate extremes we've had, the drought extremes that we've seen in the western U.S. I started thinking about this lecture back in November, and I, it's, it's, it's occupied most of my time uh, for the last two and a half months or so. I think I'm mostly ready to go. There's still some tweaking that I need to uh, get done, but um, I'm, I'm, I am definitely getting there. You know, I always wait until the last minute to, to wrap things up. Um, but I'm, uh, I've got a lot of good ideas, I think. Are you ready to go? Not quite. Um, mine is at the uh, end of February, so I have a, a bit of time to still practice and get ready. You know, sometimes you just got to get in a room and throw around mm -hmm. hypotheses and mm -hmm. figure out where you want to go and what's out of scope and what could be in We had a good time. Wow. Joellen? Hi, Bo. Hey, how are you? I'm well. Good. Bo you, is the one that gets all the ducks in a row, uh, and by she's a producer. It, without her, it would it would never work because the logistics be time, behind these things are enormous. It's up to you. Do it however you want to do it. So Bo is the one that gets everybody engaged. She's the one that keeps the train on the tracks. Uh, she's been absolutely extraordinary since day one. It's an orchestra. There's just so many players in the orchestra, and you just begin to pull them all together. At this point, it's become a pretty well-oiled machine. It, it, it really works beautifully. Everybody knows their part. The day of is actually pretty calm because everything's in place. There's not much you can do at that point. And um, it's, it's just ready to go. Good, are you, are you all ready for tonight? You need anything? Oh no, I'm great. Anything for you, Bo. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Joellen. We're looking forward to it. Why? Why are things happening specially in this very unique? Notice, look at the rest of the global ocean. It's warming, but it's happening here. This ketchup, bloody ketchup in the southern ocean part, this is where the big action's happening. How are we actually putting so much heat into the global ocean? We're putting it in through the window. But generally, we're in the dry zone. We're in that downwelling air of the Hadley cell where it comes down and this that's why we have a desert here. One of the so reasons that I think really our important. lectures are so extraordinary is because all of the lecturers uh, agree, and this for faculty members you may imagine is, is not easy, they agree to, to do dry runs. And my committee gave me such a hard time about just that one little estimate 
Turns out now we're pulling from 2,800 meters or more. And it's because the winds have intensified around Antarctica as associated with global climate change. I think how you're communicating right now, though, Julian, is exactly how you should be you communicating when you talk. Because you're not talking like that in your talk. Like what you just said right there, I'm like, that's it. That, if you start with that's that. That's how you should attitude, be talking. You're perfect. You're kind of motoring, you know. So that by the time that they stand up in front of the 2,000 people that show up at Centennial Hall, it's really a very polished lecture. I think what we all want to make sure is when the audience gets to your focal point about talking about the modeling and why it's so important and what it can mean for us, we need the audience to care. We need the audience to be really prepped to say, oh, wow, that's going to make a difference. That's why she does this. That's why she's so passionate about it. I would consider flipping the order of your topics and putting the Paris talks, the uncertainties, and the need for verification at the front end. A, it's, re it's time relevant. Everybody's just heard about Paris, so it brings them right into what's something that's current. You're totally right. B, it, it sets up the, the, why the uncertainties are important, why we need to verify, and takes you right into why you need the observations and models to get better. I am. Please, please help me out, because, wow, I had no idea I needed so much help. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I thank you all for coming. As you all know, I keep saying every year, the only reason we keep doing this is because you keep coming. <laughs> and the reason you keep coming is because we live in an amazing community with folks like you that are interested in education, and we're interested in giving you what we can. So thank you. I think it's just Tucson is just the best place in the world. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce a colleague and a friend, Joellen Russell. You have no idea how much I love being introduced by Joaquin.